Lisa, mm -hmm. I know you've asked me in the past about microcalcifications. Yes. Yes, and, and, yes. and people worry, oh my gosh, I have microcalcifications in my breast. Oh my gosh, what does that mean? Uh, and I'm going to let Bob answer first, the Honorable Dr. Smith, and then mm -hmm. I'll throw my two cents into the pot here. But that's one of the things that sort of freaks people out, microcalcifications. Well, yeah, and to, and to both of you, I mean, I, even from my sister personally, she's like, well, I've got calcifications, so does that mean that I have stage one breast cancer? You know, and can, can you just go in and get them out? It's like, just I don't, I don't want to see them. Go ahead, Dr. Smith. Yeah, you know, calcifications are normal in the breast. Uh, they are, are generally, most women will have at least some. Uh, they also tend to be associated with abnormalities, and they tend to be associated with cancer, which is one of the reasons why uh, it's very important to evaluate their morphology. In other words, in, in breast imaging, where we sort of look at their shape and their appearance and their distribution so that we can actually be reassuring to women that these are normal calcifications as opposed to worrisome calcifications. Um, literally, I believe about 85% of the biopsies done for calcifications come back normal. So to the degree that uh, expert radiologists can, can look at them and say these aren't calcifications we have to worry about, um, that's a good thing. Calcifications do absorb a lot of radiation, so they show up as bright, bright spots on a mammogram. And to that extent, when those calcifications are an indication of, of an underlying malignancy, then they help us find that malignancy when it's still very, very small. So um, it, wow. it's very important for women not to be spooked by the presence of calcifications. At the same time, they can be an indication of an abnormality and, and a growing cancer. Okay. Yeah, so. no, I and Lisa, I agree. Uh, that's a beautiful overview of microcalcifications. You know, a lot of women, as the American Cancer Society recommends, start their screening in their 40s. Mm -hmm. Sort of the peak incidence, if you will, of fibrocystic changes of the breast are women in their 40s. Uh, more breast pain, more cysts, more whatever. Frankly, more microcalcifications. Microcalcifications can be there because little areas of fatty tissue die. I mean, there's a bunch of reasons. So, as Dr. Smith just said, it's the shape and distribution and what they look like that's important to uh, the radiologist. And okay. of the categorization system that the radiologists have, from the least worrisome, completely normal mammograms, sort of more worrisome, it's called the BIRAD system, you'll okay. get into a situation where they say, well, you know, they really look benign to me. I don't think they meet the level, as Dr. Smith just suggested, that we need to do a stereotactic core biopsy yeah. because, as Bob just said, it's true. 80-85% of those are, are going to be fibrocystic changes, etc. But I wanted to bring the subject up because patients ask me about it all the time and you've asked me a lot about microcalcifications. The vast majority are benign. They're not cancerous, and, and, and that's why I've constantly emphasized that people need to be imaged at uh, certified centers, meeting all the different uh, certification standards that we've got here in the United States. Uh, we've even got higher levels now through the National Accreditation Program for Breast Centers. We've got a, a variety of things. but. And to also, I think women should be asking, how experienced is my radiologist? Yes. And, you know, and reading mammograms mm -hmm. and doing, well, breast imaging. That isn't just mammograms. It's all the breast imaging because the breast radiologist combines the mammogram results with the ultrasound with the MRI to come up with sort of a, a big picture. Hi, I'm Dr. Jay Harness, and I want to share with you important information that I believe that every newly diagnosed patient with breast cancer needs to know. I'm a breast cancer survivor. I am a breast cancer survivor. I am a breast cancer survivor. And I want every woman to know about personalized breast cancer treatment and the genomic test. A test that helps guide a woman and her doctor to the best treatment options for her. Pass it on.